as it relates to board building, why build boards? If you're going to get into board building, why would? Yeah, the the intent. I mean, sustainability is like the the crux. That's the direction I'm trying to progress in is to build a, a better board that's built better that lasts longer. Um, and wood is, first of all, it's familiar to me, but it's also, I think, the easiest path forward to to find progress in that space. And the the real idea upon progressing in sustainability is not necessarily to ditch foam, because I think foam is a necessary part of the build, but to, to ditch resin. And so I wanted to build a board where we that didn't require fiberglass and didn't require thus heaps of wasted resin. And so using wood as the strengthening layer was really the idea behind that. And I think I, I, had, I had made a ton of progress. I still have boards that are reflections of that, um, but none of them are like the silver bullet. You know what I mean? It's just steadily making progress towards a super sustainable build. Um, it's it's really tricky to, and that, that, that material works. You know what I mean? It's not good, but it works. Foam glass yeah. resin is a really functional uh, construction style, but. So what were the early builds and how do you build a surfboard without resin? Yeah, without resin, you can, you can expect to, so if you if you rely on wood to provide the strength, you then need to rely on something else to provide the waterproofing. Um, so if your if your wood is effectively your fiberglass, uh, you this you then do not need the glass itself, but you need something to provide longevity for the wood. And the closest thing, the closest avenue for that is like oil based sealers, wipe on finishes, varnishes, water based finishes. And there's things in that space. I tried almost all of them. Uh, and everything is a give and take it's pros and cons behind each move that you make. I think other parts of the world are doing a really good job at this. There's a lot of board builders in Australia and Europe that are successfully building boards without resin. Uh, unfortunately, each of those boards does require maintenance. If you have an oil-based finish or penetrating sealer of some sorts, like you have kind of this one to two year window where you need to scrub and refinish your board and while that's a really easy process to do it doesn't seem like in my experience america is ready for that people in this country kind of have that like flash consumerism where they want to buy something and just have it ready to go as long as it lasts and when it breaks or when it's mm -hmm. no longer at peak quality it's it's in the dumpster um so i'm i've you know i've kind of played both ends of the spectrum. I've built boards in like the most sustainable way as I possibly can. And some of my personal boards are that way. I have a board um, sitting over here that has no fiberglass on the outside. It has one layer of fiberglass underneath a cork and a wood veneer scrim. Um, and that's a really good construction for me. I build it for me, but I won't sell that as my business because I found, like I just mentioned, um, people are a little bit in this market or a little bit more finicky with their like longevity and care of the yeah. product tell me about the current three types of construction that you're doing now sure i have a price point wise and performance wise we have a low mid and a high um the low end price point wise is a corky and that's kind of our solution to a soft top but but we call it a semi soft top and it doesn't suck um it doesn't suck for a few reasons it's it's made by humans here in our shop uh, we don't have any mass manufacturing jigs. We don't really have any compromises on the build process. It is a fully shaped EPS core. It has a normal stringer, normal normal EPS, like uh, density, fully shaped rail, everything like fin, futures fin boxes, everything as a, as a conventional board would be shaped. And then we we offset that thickness by a little bit, by about a quarter inch total. We, we have a glassed, like a bio-based epoxy glass layer that goes on that EPS blank, and then we vacuum bag on a cork shell to the outside, and then the board is done. Uh, there is so no... When you say the glass layer is fiberglass? Yeah, the construction is EPS foam, fiberglass, cork. Got it. Words to outwards. And so, so the board is fiberglass. It does have, you know, that allows it to be durable. It allows it to have the right amount of flex. It allows it to be uh, relatively ding resistant. And then we add on the cork on top of that. And that cork is sort of twofold. It, it offsets the amount of fiberglass and resin that you need, um, prevents the need for wax. It is incredibly ding resistant and we still can have like a properly shaped rail on that thing. 
Um, and it doesn't surf like a noodle, like a wet noodle, like all kind of soft tops do. Um, so this is like kind of in the premium semi soft top category. Uh, that's the corky, the mid level so range. Of real, real quick question. Uh, str it's stringerless, correct? They're stringered. Yeah, we oh, they are stringered. A performance ply stringers inside all of them. Got you. And then you said, um, what does the wrap look like on the edge? Like, does it maintain a actual hard edge? It, yeah, we get a speed bead on there. We kind of the cork itself is eighth of an inch thick, and it has enough it has enough uh, flex and give such that it it can adheres to the glass shape. So it'll follow that speed bead um, pretty well. It, it fades off eventually, like wear and tear will kind of, you know, the leash wrapping around that speed bead over time, it will kind of like wear down that hard edge. Um, it still has a functional speed bead on it. Um, let's see. And, and truthfully, like I ride pointy thrusters a lot, and that's generally what I make for myself between that and like fishy twin fins. And I, I ride these things as my high performance shortboard. I have a corky version of that, and it's it's great. It's probably not the right construction for it. I think the right construction is more closer to like fun formance style boards. Mm -hmm. Everything other than pointy thrusters or people that care about like getting points on a bottom turn and that kind of thing. Yeah. And it's got to be very lightweight, I would imagine too, right? Yeah, super light. Yeah, the the weight of the cork added is less than than the amount of weight that we ditch by losing resin. Amazing. Yeah, it's a good it's a really good construction and they're affordable. Like I said, 650 for a short board is kind of the the price point there, 1000 for a long board. That's like got it. There. Uh, the mid-level boards that we have are called the textile boards, uh, and that's that's either an EPS or a PU core, depending on what the customer wants. I think it's a better build in an EPS core, a lot harder to build that way, but um, I, I like the performance on an EPS core of those boards. And that has a, a normal EPS core, normal stringer, a parabolic cork rail stringer around the full perimeter of the board, and then we have a fiberglass and a flax glassing schedule. So the deck patch is all flax going two thirds up the board. The fin patch going one thirds up the tail is all flax. And then a single layer of fiberglass uh, on top of that flax. And those are the high performance, like relatively normal uh, boards as far as the market is concerned. That cork does a really good job uh, dampening chatter. And that's why I mentioned EPS. Like I like the, the weight of an EPS board, but adding that cork along the perimeter of the entire thing really dampens it and makes it feel like a PU, but it's super light and flexy and like maintains that flex just because it's an EPS board. Gotcha. Yeah. And then the, the third tier of board we make is called the splinter series. And those are um, on, on the fancier end. This is like the flagship construction that we offer. It was the first thing that we really entered with like a larger degree of scale. And it's a low density EPS core with a redwood skin filling the entire deck and then cork rails and cork bottom. And the redwood skin is super beautiful. It's it's all reclaimed redwood from the Santa Cruz mountains right here in the last tree that we got. It's I could like throw a stone from my shop to like where that tree fell. And that tree wow. falls right here. My I have a, a partner with a mill that only deals in fallen trees. He slices it up, gives it to me. We sticker it and cure it here in our shop. We give it to a neighboring shop who sands it all to thickness. And then we do all the vacuum bagging here ourselves. And that's like a ridiculously authentic wood board. It's not, you know, off the shelf wood veneer. Um, and they're beautiful because of that. Yeah. We end up with some incredible looking pieces of wood. They're all different. It's no repeated wood grain, like plywood, wood veneer style production. It's, it's a really unique piece. So it looks as beautiful as a wall hanger essentially, but they're built for surfing. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to treat, they're expensive just because of the amount of labor that goes into it and premium materials, like I mentioned, like real wood going into that. So you have to treat it really well, treat it like it's expensive, you know, and, and cause you don't want to have to do a ding repair on those things. It gets a little bit more tricky. Yeah. So you mentioned also that three tiers in terms of performance. So the textile, of course, the middle build would be the highest performance surfboard. Um, is there any, given the construction, is there any compromise in terms of performance compared to traditional construction? And is there any compromise in terms of durability or is there an enhancement? 
Yeah, the redwood boards, the splinter series, those ones are going to be stiffer. So I I don't ride those again for like performance shortboard shapes. I ride textiles and corkies for shortboards if I'm wanting to do just if I want my board to respond immediately under my foot to do exactly what I'm telling it to do. Um, text textile or corkies are best for that. Uh, corkies technically wear down over time just by your feet kind of grinding on the deck. You know, it's gotcha. like an eraser on a pencil, like the way that it works, it's it causes abrasion and it wears down a little bit. That doesn't really impact performance at all, but it's the only, it's a visual impact. Uh, and then you can always just add more cork. Uh, otherwise textile boards, high performance, treat them normally. They respond normally, normal glass boards. And then, yeah, the redwood ones, I, I think I mentioned, they're they're a little stiff. Um, they're slightly heavier, almost just like a conventional PU glass job. They don't end up that heavy, but they're a little bit heavier. Um, they're a little bit stiffer. And you don't want to, you just, you just, they're beautiful and hard to match a ding repair perfectly. So you want to take good care of those. Yeah. So, um, obviously when, when it comes to sustainability, durability is a huge factor, uh, with the textile boards specifically, is there any enhancement in the durability through the construction or would yeah. you say it's equivalent? Yeah. The theory, the theory was that flax. So actually fiberglass doesn't, doesn't really contribute to the eco footprint. It's resin that does. Um, and the, the theory in the first place was to offset resin by having, you know, um, less fiberglass. And that was kind of the decision-making process to develop that board, but it ends up being the same amount of resin. Um, and the only thing that we can say is that flax offers a better impact protection than fiberglass. So you can get a board that's lighter, that has the same, less of a glass layer, quote unquote, that has the same kind of pressure denting characteristics that a normal board would. So it'll last okay. longer, but that's, it's, it's grasping for straws to call those ones super sustainable. Um, yeah. The only thing we do across the board is that we have a bio-based resin. And so we use entropy resins, which is 35% tree sap based. And so it's a, it's a nice, it's a good soft epoxy resin that goes on really well. And it's 35% bio-based content at, at finished volume. So gotcha. that's the best that we have available in the States right now. Other parts of the world, they have a really, they have, a, they're a little bit more progressive with their bio-based materials. You know, in Europe, they have, they have a couple, actually, there's one polyester bio resin that's, that's undergoing some trials right now, which is really interesting. It's about 70% bio-based and it's polyester and that's the first of its kind other than that there's 50 and 60 percent bio-based uh epoxies and they're all being tried i think i think the downside to all of those is that they yellow really quickly yeah so we'll see 35 percent is the best that we have in the states right now while still maintaining like a good functional laminating yeah. 